This is an ESP32 S3 touchscreen display from Waveshare and it's one of the best displays I've ever used. And in this video, I'm going to show you why you need to check it out for your next project. This little display is packed with a load of features that make it a great choice for a variety of applications. It comes with an ESP chip, meaning you can use Wi-Fi and Bluetooth right off the bat. And it's got a small form factor, making it perfect for portable projects. And it's really easy to program using the onboard USB-C connector. Now all those things are great, but in my opinion, the standout feature here is the screen. The screen is really clear, which means it's easy to see all the little details. And the colors are really nice and vibrant, and it just means it's nice to look at. And the best part is that the display is a touch screen, meaning that you can add additional ways for users to interact with your projects. And so this beginner's guide will help you get started with making cool interactive UIs so you can take your projects to the next level. Now to kick things off, head over to the wiki page on the Waveshare website dedicated to this ESP display. I've put a link in the description below to make it a bit easier to find. In the page contents on the left hand side, if you scroll towards the bottom you'll see a section called resources and then a subsection called demo and then go ahead and download the demo files inside the little demo subsection. That's what we're going to be using for our projects going forward. And once it's finished downloading, unzip the file. Once the file's been unzipped, if you navigate to the main folder, Arduino and Libraries, these are the main libraries that we need. And what we're going to do is copy them and paste them into the main Arduino Libraries folder. The main Libraries folder is usually under Documents, Arduino and Libraries go ahead and paste them all in there. This step is really important because these libraries are the only ones that really seem to work. So make sure you copy and paste the ones from that original zip file. Right guys, so back in that folder where we unzipped that file, this is where we're going to make a new folder for the project that we're going to be working on. So we'll go ahead and make a quick demo folder. And within that you want to make another folder with the name that you're going to create your project under. So I'll use demo again. Just follow along, it'll make a bit more sense in a moment. If you go back to the main folder, go to this one, Arduino, Examples, LVGL Arduino. All the files in there, go back to the folder you just made, into the subfolder and paste them in there. Now this part is really important. This INO file, you need it to be named the same name as the folder that it's sitting in. So it should be called in this case, demo.ino. Again, it'll make a bit more sense in a minute, but just follow those steps, that's really important. And then the last step for now is to make a folder for all our UI elements to sit in. So if we go up a directory, new folder, and we're just going to call this UI. So that's the setup done for now. Now we're going to move over to actually generating the UI. The name of the software we're going to be using to make the actual UI is called a Squareline Studio. I've put a link to the main page in the description below. Head over to their website and go ahead and download the software. And for our purposes, you can use a free license. That works really well, so just carry on with that. So once you've finished downloading and installing Squareline, set up a free license and log in. This is the main display you should be met with. And this is where we're going to set up our first project. So at the top, click on Create, Arduino, and you want to go to Arduino with TFT ESPI. Although we're not using an Arduino in this particular case, this works absolutely fine. So click on that. On the right side here, you want to set the resolution to 240. Shape is a circle. Color depth is 16 bit. Theme you can do is whichever you prefer. I just prefer dark, so we go to dark and then we're going to go and create. Overwrite and go. And guys, this is the main space where you're going to be creating your UI. There's quite a lot to go through, so a lot of it is out the scope of this video. So when you get a chance, feel free to play about with all the settings on the side and the different elements on the left side. In this video, I'm just going to show you how to set up a very basic UI, and then you can go from there. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and simply drag a text label. So you drag it just like I did there and you can position it wherever you like. To edit what's in the actual text box, go to the right side under text and you can go ahead and write whatever you want. So I'll write my channel name 
and then while we're here we'll add a few other interesting elements just so you guys can get a good idea as to what you can do with this right guys so that is a very basic UI I've just thrown together there just for this demonstration so now the next step is to go ahead and export all the UI files so we can use it with the demo code we set up earlier so once you're happy with your design go to the top export UI files and you want to find the directory you just set up a few minutes ago so if you guys remember this is the directory we set up earlier this is where we put all those files and the UI is that folder we made for the elements so you're going to click on that and select folder and you should see export succeeded and to confirm that everything's been exported successfully go to your file explorer into the UI folder and you should see a number of files so that's worked out absolutely fine now the next step is to copy all of those files go into where you pasted the example files earlier and paste them in there so that is your whole project set up now now we're going to jump into the Arduino IDE, do a little bit of code modification and then we can get that uploaded onto the display. So when you're ready, go ahead and click on the main.ino file. So whatever you've named it, look for the .ino, double click that and that should open up the Arduino IDE. So this is the code from the demo file that we opened up earlier. And if you have a look at the top here, you've got the other files that were generated by Squareline. So first things first, you want to click on select board, click over here so you should see something connected here if you've connected your display correctly. And then we want to search for the board. So this is an ESP32 S3 dev module, so that's that, click OK. And now on the main code we're going to add two lines and that's going to help the code understand that it needs to use all these UI files that we've got here. So the first thing is where you're including your libraries. Go ahead, type in include, and then in quotation marks, ui.h, so that's this file here. That tells the code to utilize this file. Then if you scroll a little bit further down, so towards the bottom, you're gonna have all these example files here. Comment out the music file, we don't need that. And then underneath, you're gonna type in ui underscore init for initialize, parentheses, and semicolon, and that's it. So with the code already, we're gonna go ahead and hit upload. What should happen is that UI that we made earlier in Squareline should come up on our screen. So let's go ahead and give this a test. So as you guys can see, the UI uploaded successfully and it looks exactly as we designed in Squareline and it looks pretty awesome. And the most important thing is all the touchscreen features which we built in work exactly as designed. So all in all, a huge success. And from this point onwards, guys, the sky really is the limit. So I'd encourage you to head back over into Squareland and just experiment. There's literally no end to the amount of things you can do with this. And I spent so much time trying different UIs, experimenting and just playing about with it. It really is a good software. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below and check out some of my other videos on the channel and I'll see you all next time.